So Tyler Baker is saying towards the end of his sermon here that Christ is already the king over the nations and he is their king because he is the king of kings and he's already ruling from his kingdom. But they just simply don't acknowledge his authority yet. And that the gospel, when it goes into these nations and it converts them, then they will convert and then that is him putting down all authority. I mean, it's just a complete and total lack of understanding of the scriptures. I'm going to be preaching a sermon this Sunday called The Foolishness of Preterism. But just uh, listen to what he says here. But the gospel is the truth. And the gospel has power. And when the gospel goes into a nation, you know what happens is people convert to Christianity. People accept and believe and trust in the message. That is not always the case. There are plenty of nations and generations of people within certain nations that completely rejected the gospel. That's just complete ignorance and just... I mean, that's that's ridiculous. That is literally not even true. And I want you to think about this. This is why it tells you Christ does have all authority and power. However, little by little, although he has all authority and power, his nations, all the nations will be subdued. He's referring to the fact that they will acknowledge his, his authority and his power. He has power and authority. What a limp-wristed little weak sissy God this guy has. Oh, Jesus is ruling the throne of heaven. And yeah, the Bible, well, he's about to say that, yeah, Jesus rules with a rod of iron, but it's really just the gospel. It's the word of his mouth. You know, it's just him saying, hey, I'm your king. Please, please obey me. Acknowledge his, his authority and his power. He has power and authority over them. He is their king. But nonetheless, he still is, is subduing the nations. How does that make sense? It's because they don't want to acknowledge his kingship. But little by little, nation after nation falls to the word of God. You know what it falls to? The sword of his mouth. Where's where has that ever happened in history? Name one nation on earth that is just sold out for the word of God and the gospel. It doesn't even exist, dude. What is he talking about? You know what it falls to? The sword of his mouth. You know the passage in, in Revelation chapter number twelve that's quoted when it says he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You know what it tells you in the Old Testament? Which rod proceeds out of his mouth? You know what that's speaking of? The word of God. That's right, because it's Jesus Christ saying to do things, and they do it. That's the whole thing when it comes to the word of God's power. When God, the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. When the king of kings issues forth a decree by the law of his mouth, the nations will obey him. To sit there and say that Jesus is ruling and reigning as a king and that the nations are not obeying him is just stupidity. Even King David praised God and said, Blessed be the Lord that subdueth my people under me. This has to be the weakest, stupidest doctrine I've ever heard. And that's really why I have not preached against preterism. Because it is just a super stupid doctrine. But since there is somebody who I believe that is a saved brother in Christ is preaching this stupid doctrine, I have to comment on it. Now, he quotes Isaiah 11. Let's listen to what he said again, and then I'll go to it. Wow. You know what that's speaking of? The word of God out of his mouth. You know what that speaks? Fire. You know what it tells you in the Old Testament? Which rod proceeds out of his mouth? You know what that's speaking of? 
the word of God. Yeah, so it's funny that he's missing certain verses there. In fact, he's missing the rest of that verse. He's quoting Isaiah 11, where it says, But with righteousness, well, I'm sorry, yeah, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth. It says, With the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. Shall he slay the wicked? What is that allegory? Oh, he's going to smite the earth. Oh, that's allegory? When the Bible says that a tempest burns round about him, is that allegory? When the Bible says that the mountains shall flow down like wax below his feet, is that allegory? It, when it says that the oceans are going to be dispersed and dry up, that he's going to expose the deep from the blast of his nostrils, is that also allegory? So everything where it says that God is going to smite and kill people, and it says that with the breath of his lips, he's going to slay the wicked. That's just allegory. He's going to slay their heart. He's going to win the nations over with the gospel. And they're all going to be converted. And that's the increase of his government. No, sir. That is not what the Bible says. This is what happens when you have a false church model. This is what happens when you have one man who sets himself above correction and you have an arrogant, proud man who refuses to receive correction. He's making Steven Anderson look like a look like an angel, dude. Like in all honesty, I've never seen Steven Anderson attack the King James Bible. I've seen Tyler Baker attack the King James Bible. I've never seen Steven Anderson appeal to Catholic saints and Catholic uh, father, church fathers and Catholic doctrines and Catholic creeds. I've seen Tyler Baker do that. I have never seen Steven Anderson preach uh, damnable heresy that can overthrow the faith of some Christians. Uh, okay, well, I have seen Steven Anderson preach damnable heresy, but not preterism. <laughs> uh, I've seen Tyler Baker now preach preterism. This is crazy. This is crazy. It's sad. And to be honest with you, it's pathetic. It's pathetic, dude. This just goes to prove exactly what Jeremiah said. And then I'll close the, the this short little video with this. Um, actually, uh, I'm not sure if it's Jeremiah 23. Let's see. Yeah, it, it was Jeremiah 23. Um, it says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. He ran to be a pastor. He's not qualified. He's not qualified. He doesn't know the Bible. And it's it's sad because, there, I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But I don't care if you're a nice guy. I care what the Bible says. And he is not teaching what the Bible says. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to expose his three persons of the Trinity sermon. And this coming Sunday, I'm going to reprove and prove that his preterism doctrine is heresy. This is pathetic. And it's funny, too, because I actually have a sermon that I just preached on Sunday. It's still, uh, I got to get um, our media guy to, um, to upload it. But I was literally talking about the paradise of God. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's just crazy. Like, that sermon debunks this sermon. But, yeah, I'm going to be preaching a whole preterism sermon. This guy is a wolf. This is crazy. He does not know the Bible. Um, but by all means, watch this sermon and then uh, listen to my foolishness of preterism sermon that I'm going to be coming out with this Sunday. All right, Godspeed.